I just say hello, everyone, and welcome. Mm-hmm. That's probably <laughs> the most appropriate way to begin things. All right, guys, welcome to a new podcast. I haven't done one of these in a really long time, but uh, I actually think we're going to try and pick it up again, maybe try and do one once a week or so. No, I shouldn't even, honestly. <laughs> that's so really I can't ambitious. Even, <laughs> I can't even pretend that that's once, a good idea to say out loud. Once a year is like yeah. a good beginning point. Yeah, and once then... <laughs> every, we'll go 54 weeks. <laughs> But uh, I don't even really have a name for it. I thought about All Cars Considered. All Cars Considered. ACC? Yeah. It really rolls off the tongue. <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> today's guest needs no introduction. Professional whiteboard artist, Jason mm. Fenske. Or as you probably know him, Engineering Explained. Right on. Thank you for having me, Braden. This is awesome. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty excited. There's a lot of things that... Uh, go on behind the scenes that uh, I get to see as a friend of yours on Facebook, like the uh, <laughs> the Taylor Swift thing. That's always a classic. Yeah, we're twins. Uh, she doesn't talk about it much, which is kind of unfortunate. <laughs> she kind of plays it like we're not even related and doesn't know who I am. But yeah, we are twins. We that's, were born the exact same day. <laughs> that's uncalled for, is what that is. <laughs> it is. You know, I was actually feeling like, I was like, ah, it is really special that Taylor Swift and I were born on the exact same day. So I googled, like, how many people are born in a day. And it's like 300,000. <laughs> Just get shut it's, down. It's not even remotely special. Like there's, <laughs> there's literally 299,000 other people just like me being like, Taylor Swift, we're twins. And it's the most <laughs> unoriginal joke ever. But I, well, you have the leg up though. You, <laughs> a slight leg up. Yeah, yeah. You can just, as her twin, that is... You know, I'd say about equally as famous. It's <laughs> She's been famous. more successful with her time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you know you got you got a decent enough backing on Twitter for when you tweet at her on your birthday that people might you know tag her and be like hey pay attention to this. That's what I hope. I feel like I maybe I know someone that knows Carly Kloss who's good friends with Taylor Swift, but none of it works. <laughs> <laughs> it's always worth a shot. <laughs> it is. So actually, one year I tweeted I was like Taylor like what's up like what are we doing for our birthday next year (laughs) and she ignored it as she does and like not too long after she's like oh by the way uh i'm hanging out with jay-z beyonce and justin timberlake for my birthday today and it was like cool thanks for the invite yeah come on (laughs) i didn't want to be there anyway that's fine yeah (laughs) but yeah so uh this is all about cars yeah right (laughs) out the beginning dude straight off the bat into cars but uh, another uncar related thing was I actually I put out in a couple different places for people to ask questions, and uh, this one Facebook group I'm in is called Initial D Hell. But I was like, this this could be interesting perspective because it's all like 14 year olds that don't even have cars yet. Uh huh. And then I had to sift through probably about 30 questions about <laughs> your hair. Oh. Which is always, uh, you know, just a right meme. It's a classic. So, good story. Uh, you have good timing with this question. I guess it's always being asked. But, so some missionaries came by my door yesterday. <laughs> and they knock, and they're like, hey, what's up? Like, do you want to hear about Jesus? And I was like, not particularly. <laughs> and they were cool with that. They were like, oh, that's fine. And one of the guys was just like, uh, is your hair naturally gray? And all right, first of all, that's a bizarre question because they're individual grays. Like, it's not a patch. Like, it's not like my whole head is gray or right. like a part of it is gray. It's like individual. So the amount of work <laughs> that would be required to dye it is is pretty absurd. So anyway, he asked, is your hair uh, naturally gray or do you dye your hair? And I said, no, I don't dye my hair. And he said, oh, he's like, how old are you? And I was like, I'm 29. And he's like, man, you're going to look like President Snow by the time you're 40. And I was <laughs> like, like, hey, get out of my I was like, okay, like you're coming here to like tell me about Jesus and you think that like making fun of my hair is going to like do a one up? Like, I don't understand the strategy here. I mean, I did reject the proposal, but I did it kindly. Like, I wasn't like, no, like, I don't believe in any of that nonsense. I was just like, no, dude, like, I don't really want to. And they were like, okay, that's fine. And then it, like, ends with... Just very salty <laughs> backhand. Yeah. That's kind of like, I, I don't know if you know, I'm a delivery driver for Jimmy John's. Yes. And uh, today I had a delivery. It was $87, and I got no tip on it to uh, this hot tub place. So as yeah. I'm walking out, I'm just thinking, I'm never buying a hot tub here. And I was like, like that's <laughs> ever going to come up. But that's, that's the best thing that popped into my mind. Like, These guys are never getting a commission from me. <laughs> Yeah, that's lame. That's lame when people don't tip in jobs where clearly the person deserves it. I mean, 
I won't get into whether or not I deserve Jimmy it. Jimmy John's so. is fast. <laughs> We're supposed to be anyway. That's the best thing is if you like if you walk into a manager like I, like do you guys tell them it's okay to speed? And they're like no. And they're like do you drive or speed though? And they're like oh absolutely all of them. <laughs> like sick. It depends which car you're taking. Yeah. <laughs> the Integra fast. Oh yeah. So fast. What yes. year is the Integra? It's a ninety five. And is it a GS LS? GS. GS. Right Sunroof on. and leather interior. Right on. I had a ninety nine GS. That was my first car. Absolutely love that thing. Dude, this is really weird. You're answering all the questions that I had lined up already. Oh, like in order? Yeah, there was people asking how old you are. You already addressed that. Got that. Uh, asked what your first car was. Though, actually, as far as age is concerned, so people ask that all the time, and it's like, whatever, it's Taylor Swift's age. Uh, <laughs> but if <clears throat> there's a video I did on a, a old Ford Flathead V8 engine, and the model that I have, or something about it, was was created in 1953. So in the video, I was like, coincidentally, that was the year I was born. Oh, yeah. And just, and just go along with it. Like, whatever. Like, I'm going to troll people back because I get trolled all day long. Yeah. So the amount of comments, though, that are, like, certain that I'm being honest in that moment and, like, people spreading that I guess now I'm 66, <laughs> uh, but then it was 65. They're like, wow, like, you look really young for 65. You're doing but, like, great. Serious. And some of them you can tell, like, they're just messing with me, but there was tons of them that were like, Oh, this guy, like, I was wondering how old he is, and now I know, in 65, and honestly, he looks pretty good for 65. <laughs> like, you know, now that you say it out loud, that's just... Yeah. That's kind of like, have you met Ross yet? I don't know if you uh, have. I'm not positive. He appears on I don't on think the... I did. I don't think he was around last time, actually. No, he appears on the channel a lot. Actually, the Volvo that did the burnout in the shop before the S2000 is that one. Okay. I bought it from him. Nice. But uh, it's got a turbo on it and stuff now, but he... A little heavier set dude, and he's got a big beard and real long hair, and he looks like a biker. Yeah. So we started saying in the videos that he was like 40 or 45 <laughs> for a while, and yeah. then people were like taking it seriously, and then they're like, why do you hang out with such an old guy? I was like, what? I was like, you can't actually believe that he's actually 40, <laughs> and everyone's just, people are just straight up, yeah, yeah that makes sense. And then Also, deep, there's nothing wrong with hanging out with an old dude. That's what I... <laughs> Hey, you, what a freak, dude. Shout out to Eric the car guy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, more skids, too. DJ, he's got a beard as well. And there was, like, a, in one video, they, like, mentioned that he was married and had kids. And mm -hmm. someone, I guess, added him on Snapchat or something and asked how the wife and kids were doing, like, yeah. completely unironically. <laughs> so it's clear that people on the internet have absolutely no concept of age and what people should look like yeah. for their age. And I mean, I was lying about the whole Taylor Swift thing. I really am 65. Yeah. <laughs> and the record's set. <laughs> so, back to your Integra. Yours yes. was a GS as well, correct? GS, B18, B1. Yep. Yep. Non-VTEC, but everyone no. still asks you about the VTEC. No VTEC, but yeah. for sure, like, oh, is that the uh, GSR? No, it's not the GSR. Yeah. It's not the C1. It's it a Type the R, then? Uh, mm. No. <laughs> yeah, those Type R's... The value of those things now. It's crazy, it dude. It is crazy. I was like, because somebody was like, why would you buy this when you can buy an Integra Type R? And it, I can't remember what it was, but it was like a <laughs> used, it was a it was like a used <laughs> 911 or something. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? How can you even put those against each other? Yeah. So I'm looking at Type Rs and in good shape, they're like 25 grand. And I was like, oh my God, I'd just buy a used 911 at that I know. Point. Performance for the money for these like old classic, incredible, but, but like, let's be honest for a moment, like an old NSF is going to be slow and old type r is going to be slow and they're right. so expensive yeah yeah Did but they're, they're a, very cool a uh, guy named duskin here locally has a right hand drive nsx oh right on he, what uh, year is it it's a 91 i believe oh, and uh, he uh actually two days ago crashed it in the oh, snow no. he totaled that and before that he totaled his r35 gtr was he on winter tires i don't think so people don't appreciate tires <laughs> they actually no the I, best thing I'm 100% on board with this because I for the longest time I just had it stuck in my head you're like you can't drive a rear wheel drive car in the winter that's yeah. ignorant so I had my golf and then I bought my Audi I had an Audi A4 and I was all about the Quadro lifestyle mm -hmm. and then you know a couple years down the road I have the Miata and after I lifted it I put studded snow tires on it and there was nothing I couldn't do with that yeah, car yeah 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 so I'd, awesome. I put snow tires on my S2000, and it's great. It's fantastic. I was like, there's parking lots with like 10 inches of snow where they plowed it over, yeah. and people are like, you're going to be able to get out? I'm like, oh, yeah. Watch me. <laughs> wow. <What? laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. I had a, the VTEC thing I had to do the other day. I pulled up on a delivery, and this guy was detailing cars at a car dealership. And he's like, what is this? I was like, it's an Acura Integra. He's like, thing's pretty cool, huh? I was like, yeah. He's like, it's Honda, right? And I was like, yeah. He's like, does it have a VTEC? <laughs> it's just like that. I was Singular. Like, I was like, no, it doesn't have a VTEC. Yeah, just on cylinder one. It's got a half, <laughs> half a VTEC. You know, they weren't quite there with the technology in terms of the full VTEC engine at the time. Those cars, though, like, seriously, you can take... A full size mountain bike, toss it in the back without removing a tire and, yeah. and a tiny little Integra. And you're like, what? And then I like struggle to do that in my Subaru Crosstrek. And I'm like, this thing is made to be like uber practical. Right. And my Integra, I could just load for days with just random stuff. I think I grossly underestimated the handling capability of them. They're, yeah, they're super light. Yeah, great cars. I mean, I offend a lot of people, but I easily have as much fun in that as I did in my Miata, even when the Miata had really expensive suspension on it. I haven't driven an NA Miata, so I can't say. Oh, uh, I've owned I, three. How have you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've never. Actually, and I rode in Alex uh, from Car Throttle. I rode in his, but I haven't driven it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I've only driven the ND. I love the Miata. I, I could not say that I enjoyed my Integra more than it. Yeah. Uh, but the Integra was a lot of fun. I, I, I love that car. I don't know if I enjoy the Integra more. I think there is definitely the the lateral comfort there yeah. that's very helpful because yeah. uh i was i was way squishing the miata and daily drive i'm pretty sure i developed scoliosis <laughs> from driving that car every day for eight months yeah the integra has space for tall people which is cool and rare in cars that are that small yeah and exactly yeah but uh my miata when i i bought it in utah for a thousand dollars i was driving it back home on all stock suspension the, the rear was even pretty toasted <laughs> and i just i bought it i wanted to hate me out as really bad because oh this is the best handling car on the planet blah 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 so i i was like i'm gonna buy one i'm gonna drive it and see how i like it and mm -hmm. there's pretty decently twisty roads between here and ogden and it, it took all of two hours into that drive to be like oh i get it yeah it's such a good car and oh they are they are so good they are so good i get that question a lot like What's the best car you've driven? What's your favorite car? Like, there isn't a question when it comes to, like... Like, I think I think that question is silly to, to not be realistic when you're answering. And so I like to go to more affordable cars because it's like, well, this is things that people can actually buy. Right. And a new ND Miata, and, I mean, they're coming down now in, in used prices because the 2016 is when they were introduced. Yeah. Like, for the money, no car out there will make you smile as much. They are so much fun. Why don't I own one? I don't know. I don't know why I got one. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I wasn't a huge fan of the ND. I mean, I like the way it looks. I've yeah. never driven one, so I guess I really can't speak. But I just felt like it was an old person car. Yeah. But then, when I was driving my NA Miata, yeah. which at the time was like this far off the ground and had <laughs> 15 by 8 wheels with stretched tires on it, I was driving through my parents' neighborhood, and I saw a probably, like, 60-year-old gentleman driving an ND. I was going by, and he just waves at me. I was like, all right, maybe these people are okay. <laughs> and then yeah. there was always the, uh, when you have an N A Miata, like, the signal when you see another one, you just do you kind of just finger blast the headlight other? button. Yeah. <laughs> and I, it, that is it, actually really cool. Yeah, it's it's a nice little community <laughs> thing. And then every day, or almost every day, at Jimmy John's when I was delivering in it, I would see an older lady who drove one, like, pristine with a hard top on it. I'd do it every single time. And I got the Taylor Swift treatment, dude. Not one time. <laughs> Did she ever flash her lights back at me? I was really disappointed by that. That is disappointing. I mean, when you look up to someone your whole life because, <laughs> because you were born right next to them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, in the same hospital. There's no need to go pulling birth certificates or anything like that. It's just something you gotta take people's Taylor Swift's words actually for. sixty-five. I don't know if people. Were <laughs> yeah, that's the craziest she, part. She that's what people are overlooking. Holy crap, dude. Modern <laughs> plastic surgery has come a long way. Yeah, I mean, if you have money, you can look really good. Elon Musk uh, is, a, is a great example. Yeah. Like before PayPal and after PayPal. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know his full name is Elongated Muskrat? <laughs> I wasn't taught that. <laughs> so I'm going to open up this uh, Reddit post I made. Oh, oh cool. God. It got a little more out of hand than I... <laughs> it was earlier. So, let's see here. There was a couple on here that I was curious about, 
And the most upvoted one is what's next for the S2000. Oh, man. People are going to be super disappointed by this. Yeah. Um, I have a couple little things for it. I want to start a new project, if I'm being honest. Uh, and and I actually just met a guy on the on the side of the road I was filming. And he's like, oh, man, I love your S2000. And I was like, yeah, I'm thinking about selling it. And he's like, no. And then I told him like what my plans are. And he got even more upset because my plans are silly. Uh, but essentially... I've probably done like 30 to 35, maybe 40 videos if I'm like pushing it on the S2000. Like there's a bunch. People are like, oh, you never do any S2000 stuff. And I'm like, I did like 30 to 40 videos on it. Like there is a lot of stuff, even though it looks exactly the same as it did like when I started. Right. Uh, there was a lot of stuff that I did with it. Like I, I got its value out of it. And I think it's in a really good place. It's supercharged, low boost, stock injectors. Uh, like it's it's kind of maxing out those stock injectors, but it's like it's at a spot where it doesn't need anything. It's perfectly street legal, uh, passes emissions, um, and yet you know it's got updated final drive ratio, 80 more horsepower over stock. It's in a really 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 great space, and I think if I were to change it further, I would ruin it. Right. And so I I, I think I'm just gonna sell it as is at some point. Uh, I may do a few other little things with it. I've got some like sponsored videos coming up that I may use it for, but kind of in a auxiliary manner, not in like a I'm doing this to my car. It's just like a background thing for right. my car to use. Right. Um so I don't have great plans for it. I'm probably gonna sell it when I don't know because I'm always behind. And honestly, if I wasn't behind it'd probably been gone four or five months ago. Right. But, yeah. Yeah, it's I get that way about stuff too. Like the Miata, I had myself convinced I would never sell it, and then one day I was just like, "It's like, wh it looks like a typical Miata now. It's yeah. slammed. It's on wide wheels." And I was like, "I don't know where to go from here. I don't want to turbo it because you can type in turbo Miata on YouTube and have yeah thirty thousand hours worth of footage to watch. Yep, and it's not like it's anything groundbreaking. And I just I hated working on that car. Yeah. So much. It had so many miles on it that I was always working on it. Mm -hmm. I did the brake booster three times oh because my. I just kept blowing for some reason. I uh, swapped the trans on it because I got super lucky in that uh, one of like less than 5,000 NA Miatas <laughs> ever made came with faulty transmissions that would just occasionally get stuck in reverse. <laughs> and there was nothing you could do about it. It's not like the stick itself was stuck in reverse. Yeah. The stick would be what looks like neutral, but it would be in reverse. And if you put it in what you thought was first, it'd be fifth. So you try and roll forward and think your <clears throat> clutch is toast. And then I discovered this in the rain, nonetheless, at like 1.30 in the morning. I had work the next day, so I put the car in neutral. And then take my foot out of the clutch and it goes boom, and stalls. And I was like, what just happened? So I actually had That's to do bizarre. it again one time. The craziest part was the way you fix it. Other than putting a new transmission in it, you take the reverse light switch out and you jam a screwdriver in there and you can actually mechanically push the reverse lock out back into place. They're like, that'll fix it forever. <laughs> and then forever came two weeks later when I was in traffic at 2 p.m. <laughs> and this lady comes up to me. And she's like, uh, you need to move this. You need to move this. I was like, uh, you don't understand. Like, it can't. <laughs> it's in gear, and uh, there's nothing I can do about it. And she's like, all right, well, can we help you push it? I was like, we can push it, but I have to keep my foot on the clutch pedal the whole time. She's like, well, how about you let me steer? I was like, okay, but do not take your foot off the clutch pedal yeah. because you very well could just destroy my transmission entirely. Yeah. And she's like, all right, I'll let you steer. And I was like, yeah, that's probably the, <laughs> the safer bet. So I got that fixed, and I finally... Uh, that same day, actually, I had my buddy pick me up and went back, and I had an Allen key that I was using to push it back, and the Allen key slipped into the transmission, and I was just like, oh my god, what do I do here? So I was like, well, it's basically a Honda, so we'll just bolt her back up and drive it. And then I got the transmission from my parts Miata, and I was like, I'm going to swap that eventually. And I drove it with an Allen key in the transmission for like four months. And That's then amazing. the first thing we did was when we drained the transmission before we checked it out, or dr to, took it out, we checked to see if the Allen key was there. It was stuck right to the magnetic drain <laughs> bolt. And I was like, that is incredible. That's why they put them in there, in case you lose your Allen key. Yeah, it happens a lot more than people like to admit. <laughs> you mentioned uh, that you didn't think you would ever sell your Miata. And I feel like this is something that I'm bad at relating to the majority of people who like cars on. I think cars are awesome. I love cars. Uh, they're the thing that gets me like the most excited about like teaching and learning and all that kind of stuff. Um, but 
I don't get attached to any of my cars. Like I had my Integra for 10 years. Uh, that's like only like 3% of my life. Right. I'm pretty old, but 3% of, of being really old is still a long time. And I just like, I sold it, it was gone and I didn't think twice. And like, same with the S2000, like people are like, oh, do you miss your SDI? Like, do you miss, it's like, no, nah, like it's gone, whatever. And I, I don't get attached and I can understand how like some people do. I just personally don't. And so to me, like getting rid of the S2000, it'll be like, Whatever, like next. Yeah. And I and I'm positive. I'm positive my next car will be worse. Yeah. It will be worse. But it's like whatever, it's something to learn with and play with and do new stuff with. Right. And that's it's funny to me how I can get that way with certain cars and then other ones. Like my Volvo, I've put yeah. way too much money into that. Thing. Yeah. Like the engine out there it's got a forged bottom end now. I'm putting a CD double nine trans from a three seventy Z in it. And I saw another white one come up that I hadn't crashed, so yeah. I was like, oh man, I kind of want to get that <laughs> and put all my stuff in it. And they're like, boy, well, that car has so much heritage. I'm like, that car is a piece of shit, dude. <laughs> I'll take the engine and everything else good out of it yeah. and send it right to the scrapyard. Yeah. Yeah. It's It's been fun. How's your Integra on oil? Oh, uh... <laughs> I know yeah, funny a, story. I noticed a few spots. Yeah. Out there. Well, there's there's a lot, you know, from everything else that's been parked there. But yeah, you know, you fill up the tank, you might as well <laughs> throw a quart of oil in there. I drove. So when I moved to Oregon, uh, I drove from North Carolina to Oregon, and I put five quarts in my Integra to get to Oregon. Five quarts. It went through an entire oil change and then some to drive across the country. I'm actually taking that one to California at the end of this month. So I was like, I'm just going to grab because I, I run only the finest super tech oils from Walmart. Right Although I might need to test out the new Amazon Basics yeah, Amazon. oil. There's actually a video that just, I guess, is going a little viral right now about is it good or not. Yeah. I, I haven't I, watched it. I saw, yeah, I can't remember the dude's name that did it. But is yeah. it Project Farm? Yeah, I, it I is. I would assume, because he does a lot of that kind of stuff. Yeah, because I, uh, I was, someone commented that because I posted a picture of the Super Tech Oil on mm -hmm. Instagram. I like, didn't even use Amazon Basics. I was like, hang on, is that a thing? <laughs> so I was looking it up, and yeah, that video came up a whole bunch of times. But uh, yeah, I actually, I drove it up into McCall, um, up in the snowy, have you been to McCall? Yes. Uh, by Brundage. Yeah, awesome place. So, uh, yeah. I uh, Right before then, I was like, boy, these lifters are getting a little loud. So I pulled over to my parents' house before we left and took the dipstick out, and it was like bone dry. <laughs> and I was like, oh. So I put a quart of oil in it, and it was still dry. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it's a Honda. It'll be yeah, okay. It will. It will. It's crazy that it will, but yep, it I will. I think my Accord was actually worse, though, on oil. Yeah, well, any number of the Accords I've had, they just... Uh, Honda's uh, piston rings weren't built to last as long as the cars. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> my S2000 has actually been significantly better. I don't put as many miles on it as I did on my Integra, but it doesn't burn oil like my Integra does. And I'm actually working on a video now on my Crosstrek because boxer engines are kind of notorious for burning oil. Right. So I've been measuring that. And it does burn some. And mm -hmm. for a new engine, like, that's not awesome. But it's way less than I was expecting. Right. So... I mean, it makes it 6,000 miles without needing anything added. And it's like, what more do you need? Yeah, you can, you can live with that. Yeah. You're actually going to like this one. It's The Ooh. question is, how old is he? He sounds like he's got lots of experience, but looks so young. <laughs> see? Yeah, see, that's the, the key is to just look young. So, again, <laughs> born in 53 with a Ford flat plane. Yep. Or flat, not flat plane. Uh, that's the Shelby. Uh, the flat head. Mm-hmm engine i think that's when it died i think that's what happened they probably killed it in 50s i would imagine so because that was i don't know i might have sent you a picture of ross's car but ross bought a 48 ford super deluxe this is the most baller thing ever dude it's got <laughs> suicide awesome. doors but it has a flathead v8 yeah and he's like when it was new it was making like 110 <laughs> horsepower <laughs> yeah so uh. <laughs> Yeah, Pilates is the key. <laughs> oh, okay. Is that still a thing? I don't know. I haven't heard anyone say that word in a long time. Does that happen on the West Coast? I, I just remember my friend's mom would talk about Pilates when I was growing up, and I was like, what is Pilates? I think I think it's moved on to yoga at this okay. point. Hot yoga. Yeah. And God, Zumba. I can't, I can't even imagine that that's fun to be in a room <laughs> full of sweating people for hours on end that they intentionally have like 98 degrees yeah i couldn't handle that like, I, sign me up take my money dude. i don't like hot drinks purely because i just start sweating if i drink yeah. them and so i can't imagine like yeah like have a cup of coffee and then go to hot yoga there's there's people <laughs> kill me 
<laughs> There's people that know, like, too, uh, someone's going to point this out at some point, so I might as well say it, but all... There's no place I could live comfortably. Because I, in the wintertime, I video slow down because I bitch about how cold it is. And in the summertime, they slow down because I bitch about it being too hot. So someone's going to be like, where's the breaking point? I'm just going to be like, all right, I'm going to just take summers and winters off and yeah. film a bunch of videos in spring and fall and Dude, just ride them out. Yeah, it is tough. I So I was trying to film a video in my garage and I have two little space heaters and I was like, this will be fine. I turn them on in the morning and like I go back in the garage six hours later and it's like 10 degrees warmer. So I was like, okay, that was worthless. So I turned them on at night, the night before, thinking, I'll just go in there in the morning, and it'll be, like, nice and toasty, and I can get started on filming. And it was 49 degrees after all night of two space heaters being on. And the garage is insulated. Like, it's not attached. It's a detached garage that's just 15-degree air is on one side and 49-degree air is on the inside. But it was like... Man, it is brutal. And then people are like, why is your nose red? And it's like, because it's freezing when I'm filming. Dude, honestly, the space heater business might be the best (laughs) one to get into. Because you're selling hopes and dreams. And you don't have to back it up at all. If it's warm, like, three feet around it, you're going to make millions of dollars. Yeah. Well, I now have a 240 outlet to charge my tesla so I, i've been looking at 240 heaters oh, yeah. that can crank out way more heat so yeah my yeah. landlord is actually he doesn't like space heaters because he's scared they're going to start a fire but he told us to get one of the butane ones that's like a little jet engine <laughs> or propane i was like yeah okay open flame that's <laughs> yeah that's more reasonable also, but i don't get that people say that to me as well they're like why don't you just get one of those and i'm like because the garage is closed. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, I'll I, die. What's the problem? <laughs> Start your car up in there too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is all right. That is actually a cool hack which I have done. Uh, I haven't done it with a Tesla yet, but I did it when I had the Leaf in. I would just roll the windows down in the Leaf and crank the heat. Oh my god! And, and with an electric car, See, you can heat your garage. I was, <laughs> I was actually on a very similar wavelength when my buddy was coming over and was going to help him weld up some exhaust on his Honda, and I was like. What if I just start the Mustang and then run some tubes from the exhaust? I was like, I can't believe that that car is as old as I am and there's no exhaust leaks anywhere else that aren't going to suffocate me the second I step in there. But I didn't I didn't consider the electric car variable. That's a good yeah. call. And you can get you can get like an old crappy leaf now for like 4 to 5 grand. Jeez, so but they still are, they'll still yeah, space <laughs> super affordable space heater. Just four to five grand. But, like, they'll have... I mean, some of those are still in warranty, like, 20, 30,000 miles on them. And they're selling, like, the 500E. I was actually looking at getting a 500E for a little bit. Uh, the i3s are more pricey. They're, like, 15 grand. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, a, a used uh, Nissan Leaf could be an excellent investment. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a solid <laughs> idea. If you got a two-car garage here. but you're only working on one car... <laughs> yeah, buy a Leaf. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My parents' garage is actually heated. I, you've been to that garage. Yes, that was really nice. That place is super cool. Yeah. I gotta go dig my rabbit out of that. But <laughs> um, not, not a living rabbit, it's a car rabbit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been neglecting it. I'll be surprised, honestly, if it's still doing okay in there. <laughs> All right, so the hard-hitting questions of the car world. Cereal first or milk first? Cereal or oh, what goes in the bowl first? Yeah. Cereal. Is there actually people that put milk in first? Can how, you, how you imagine? How do you know how much milk to put? I mean, I guess they ask, how do you know how much cereal to put? I just, I can only imagine you dumping cereal in and milk going everywhere. <laughs> there, you have to be yeah, I feel out like of you, your mind if you, you think that's okay. determine how, how much cereal to pour based on how hungry you are, and then you put the appropriate Yeah, you match it. it. Yeah. There's it's no a, there's nobody going, I want this much milk, <laughs> and then we'll deal with whatever cereal. I comes. actually get out measuring cups. <laughs> <laughs> oh god this guy hit us with four of them um there's one about you oh it is this one in the video why expensive cars aren't reliable jason said expensive cars like the s-class coupe do not have parts that last a long time because the first owners of such cars would have sold the car by the time those parts would have began to break mm-hmm. so is there a brand or even a particular car that does not have planned obsolescence okay is that how you pronounce it I think that's. I think that was good. It was a good try. So I, I want to mildly correct this person, and that's a rude thing to do. But I, I didn't say that the S class is unreliable. I said that expensive cars don't need to be reliable, and they don't. Yeah. And the reason why is because 
the vast majority of them are leased. And people that are leasing their cars don't care. They care about payment, and payment does, you know, how much that car depreciates will affect payment. But reality is, they're not going to own it forever. They're not going to have the headaches associated with all those things going wrong. So they don't care. Yeah. They pay a little bit more for it. They've got plenty of money. They're not worried about it. So, uh, what was the question? Now that I'm now that I've it's, lost myself, he was asking oh, what, if, what brands. What are, brands? Yeah. Well, Honda. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think if if you're like if luxury is the goal, I, I feel like people get debatable on whether or not Lexus is, can be classified as luxury. I personally would classify it as luxury, and I think they genuinely do care about reliability, and that's why you always see them ranked number one in reliability. Uh, also. That brings up that interesting Chevy commercial. I don't know if you saw it. Did you see it air about Chevy saying that they were the most reliable cars? Yeah. So then Toyota was like, nah. Yeah. And Chevy was like, eh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I enjoyed that. I, there, see, here's the thing. There's a lot of really cool Chevy vehicles. I feel like their marketing, though, is just the most frustrating thing ever. It really ever is. Yeah. Because it's like... Quit saying that aluminum's dumb. Like, every engineer that works for your company would disagree with your marketing statement here. That's my favorite thing is give it five years and Silverado's going to have an aluminum right. body. Well, they went to a carbon fiber bed because they were like, oh, crap, we can't use aluminum. <laughs> yeah. Even Ooh. though it's way cheaper. <laughs> we backed, our, backed ourselves into a corner on that one. Yeah. Uh, so buy a Lexus, I guess, if you're concerned about leather seats and reliability. It's funny that you actually brought that up because whether or not Lexus is a luxury band is exactly what the argument ensued in the oh. comments beneath that yeah, question see, people well here's an interesting thing that i think perhaps people don't uh assume uh and that's fair like i don't know everything that is going on in everyone else's life but like when you run a youtube channel i'm sure you can relate to this like a lot of the comments are predictable yeah like you know when you say something exactly what kind like, of backlash uh, you're gonna yeah. get for it and sometimes you say it and you know it and you're like, I should redo it. And you still include it anyways because you're like, no, like it's a ton of effort. Yeah. And I am just going to address this minor mistake uh, elsewhere. But or, or even if it's not a mistake and you just know it's going to bring up backlash. Um, that's one of them. Like Lexus isn't a luxury brand. Like Tesla isn't a luxury brand. And it's like, I don't know, like honestly... Compared to my Crosstrek, which is obviously not a luxury car, if I then get in my Tesla, it's like a world of a difference. Right. Like, as far as, like, what is luxury? I don't know what people define as luxury. So, to me, it's, like, quiet. Like, I I don't need much. If, yeah. If it's quiet, I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like, this is nice. <laughs> yeah, this is luxury. I'm actually going to turn this towards you a little okay. bit more. But, Fair. uh... Yeah, I, I definitely would count Lexus. I would even say Tesla is fair to call a luxury. Yeah, I mean, the cars are expensive. Like, the Model S and the Model X are crazy expensive. They start at, like, 80 90 Yeah. And the base price now for a Model 3 is uh, 43 or so. Right. So, it's like, that's not cheap. That's three class. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, three series is a three class. Three class. Oh. <laughs> that's, one, that's one of those ones. It's like, yeah. this guy doesn't even know what a Here we go. BMW is. Uh, so a Mercedes three class, <laughs> everyone calls that a uh, luxury vehicle, but but it's you know, like an, an A class is what thirty grand. Yeah, and it's like okay, so yeah, yeah. I don't know. Anyways, rant. Yeah, <laughs> and so this guy's questions are kind of everyone gets your password from the video. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm gonna have to be careful about that. I'm just gonna change it actually now that I think about yeah, it. Good but, call. Uh, because everybody who's here, the second I've had a couple of drinks, they're just watching over my shoulder. I'm like, you got to see this. I'm just like, dang. Everyone's <laughs> going to find out like all my plans for world domination that I've saved yeah. in my Note 9. Just curious of yours and Jason's opinion. I'm glad. Thank you for Ooh. acknowledging me, but you don't have to know who I am. Um, <laughs> Braden, you exist and you're important. <laughs> in the future of autonomous cars, will governments try to ban people from driving their own cars in the name of safety? God, that's a loaded question. That's hard to answer. I yeah. don't know. It's maybe <laughs> they might try. Are they going to succeed? I kind of hope not. Yeah. I mean, do I want it to happen? No. So is that what you want to hear? <laughs> no, it's not going to happen. No, it's it's definitely not. There's no way. Yeah. No, you know, I think it could. Uh, I think it's going to come down eventually where there's going to be a liability concern. And so insurance companies aren't going to want to insure you because you are significantly higher risk to everyone else around you than someone who's in an automated car. And right. so insurance is going to skyrocket, and then it'll be a rich man's game of I get to drive around in my car because I'm loaded and I can pay for insurance, 
everybody else is just Ubering in these automated cars. Yeah. So it will probably come down to something like that where they get phased out. I would assume, like, track driving and that kind of thing. Like, we still have cool laws. Like, people rag on California, but California still has cool laws. They allow you, if you buy something before, like, 1975, you can literally do whatever you want to it. Yeah. And, like, that's awesome. So you can still have cool stuff. And assuming we are still allowed to have cool stuff, I don't know. Whatever change is going to happen, you got to adapt. Yeah. That's Idaho is actually very similar in that front. The year is 81. Okay. So my my Mark II Golf that I had was an 86 and that thing would not pass emissions to save yeah. its life and I liked Mark 1's better anyway. So after I sold my Audi and knew I wanted an old Volkswagen, I wanted to get an 80 year older Rabbit cuz they had yeah. the front end without the corner lights and I was like I can put whatever I want yeah, in there. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's the 16 valve that thing is We'll say not probably going to be great on emissions. It'll be <laughs> EFI though, so it should be better than mechanical injection. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's uh, Idaho's the same way. Eighty-one and older, you don't have to pass emissions. Yeah. Although people would argue that Idaho doesn't care anyway. If you've seen the Steve, the that car we cut into a pickup truck that has a six foot tall exhaust with a turbo <laughs> sitting on top of it. I haven't seen the Steve. We actually uh, Ross got pulled over driving it one time because he he's like, oh, I gotta make it legal. And I was like, that's not the right word to use. Less attention grabbing is yeah. probably something along those lines. <laughs> but uh, so we put a license plate light on it, and this officer pulls him over. And at the time it was summer, so it had no doors on it. This is mm-hmm. a Ford Festiva cut into a truck. No additional support done for the fact that half the car is gone. You can actually feel the chassis go like this, like opposite each other if you drive it on like speed bumps. Yeah. And uh, six foot tall exhaust. At the time, it didn't have the turbo, but it just had a tractor flapper on top. Smokes like a <laughs> just unbelievable amount. And the cop pulls him over. It's got one mirror in it because the doors are gone. And he's like, yeah, your uh, bumper can't be emitting a white light. And Ross goes, oh, that's for the license plate. And he's like, okay, have a good night. I was like, <laughs> What? All of that? That all you got is the license plate light. Yeah. And you blatantly yeah, you ignored have have everything mirrors. else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. N- no mirrors. Half the car is gone. It has no suspension at all. We put hockey pucks in place of the springs in the <laughs> rear, and in the front just has nothing. <laughs> There's just struts. So <laughs> wild. So Idaho. If you want to get away with car stuff, although well, and there's, I think it's only three counties that there's actually emissions testing yeah. in Idaho. So yeah, we're fortunate other, enough to be in yeah. one. Yeah. If if you live in one of the other, I don't know how many counties are in this state, but if you live in any of those, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, Charles, our fabricator guy, he um, he has a YouTube channel too called Fab Town. Shout out there, but Fab Town. Uh, he uh, he lives in Elmore County, out in Mountain Home. So he's always like, well, I have a business address out here. Just register one of your cars here. Oh. I was like, I might have to take you up. I mean, I live in Mountain Home. <laughs> yes, like, sign away the- <laughs> here's my password. And by the way, here's how I'm going to scam the law. <laughs> what, ca- <laughs> what car do you guys think will be the last car to offer a manual transmission? That's actually pretty good. That's kind of a fun question. Uh, okay, so so what brands are like very dedicated to it? I wanted to say Toyota initially because of the Corolla being available in manual, the Corolla hatchback, but the Supra thing is kind of... Yeah, they went to the 8ZF, which is an awesome transmission, but yeah, yeah, it's kind of a bummer. I think Volkswagen cares a lot about manuals. Mm -hmm. Subaru has, but I could see Subaru phasing them out just because their buyers will not be concerned if they do. Um, I mean, obviously, like, STI, BRZ owners would, but the rest of them, which is what, like, people, I don't know, People rag on Subaru because of, like, how old school the BRZ and, and STI are. But if you, like, look at the volume of those cars that they put out, it is nothing. Like, they make all their money on Outback and yeah. Forester and Crosstrek. Yep. So, like, investing in those cars that they sell eight of is just silly. And it's a bummer because, I mean, it's cool that they kept them around. It's a bummer that that engine is ancient. Right. Um. Yeah, so I think I think Volkswagen they are they are I mean they'll put a manual in almost anything which is awesome. Um, Mazda puts manuals in a lot of their cars, and they're even going to do it with the Skyactiv X engine, which yeah. is like the future of internal combustion engines paired with a manual transmission. It's like good for you, Mazda. That's really cool. So I think that's neat of them. Um, yeah, maybe a maybe a. Mazda or a Volkswagen because Mazda actually likes to do old school stuff like as good as they can which, right which I think is very neat so maybe maybe it'll be Mazda See, I would have voted up until Ford discontinued every car they sold in the U.S. that Ford would do it because the STs and RSs were only available in manual 
Yeah. And they were kind of, you know, like, okay, well, here's, you know, this performance mm-hmm. car. Performance but, car needs to have a manual. But we've got the Edge ST, so yeah. what more? thank God. <laughs> what more do you want? So the, the answer is Miata. It's always. Yeah, easy. that's honestly. Yeah. And then it was actually funny that you brought that up because there was a question in here somewhere. God, I might have lost it. Um, I was basically asking what you think the future of engines is because of things like Sky Active X and the mm. development. Like, uh, is Sky Active X one that just has an insanely high compression number? Yeah, so it's a 16 to 1 compression ratio in prototype form. I don't know what production will be, and that should come out this year, I believe. Um, and then, yeah, they, they use a, a different form of, like, combustion timing it's like they they use partial compression ignition partial spark ignition so it's kind of a combination of like a diesel and a gasoline engine yeah what do i think is the future like i think mazda realizes uh that electrification is where things are going like that's in their plans they will be going electric eventually and they've stated that um i think people are like i i get a lot of kind of opposing comments because like there's there's the group that's like okay like petrol engines until i die and then there's a group that's like the future's cool whatever right um and and then there's the group like go beyond that of like why would anyone ever invest in an internal combustion engine in today today's world and it's like well there's a lot of reasons why everyone can't own an electric car like a lot of reasons today yeah and mazda is very upfront about that and they're like look if we can improve emissions on our cars we can have a significantly greater impact than if we sell an electric car at this point in time because no one's going to buy our electric car because they don't need it for their specific scenario. Right. But our other cars make perfect sense for them. And so if we can improve the emissions on what they're buying, then we can improve emissions overall through improving the internal combustion engine. It's like that's a very logical strategy for today's world. So I think that makes sense. I think, yeah, everything's going to be hybrid like – uh, Volvo has said all their cars will be electrified, I think, starting in, like, 2020 or something like right. that. I don't know what year it was. but Yeah, it's but, soon. Yeah. Like, so uh, there's going to be a lot more hybrids, which is, like, similar with turbos. Like, turbos used to be, like, this cool thing. Like, a right. car was cool if it had a turbo. Now, like, literally everything comes with a turbo, and it's not, like, a selling point anymore. It's, like, this is going to be fuel efficient. And then you're, like, wait a minute. It's not actually fuel yeah. efficient. <laughs> when I drive it how I want to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, everything has gone turbo now, and I think similar, everything's going to go hybrid. And, yeah, maybe in the future, who knows, if if battery technology improves, if charging technology improves, electric's going to be way, way, way more common and convenient for everyone. Yeah, I I definitely agree, and I think that it's, everything's going to move to electric, and there's not... So, in the grand scheme of things, was the future of combustion engines? I'd say they're probably not going to exist anymore. Well, yeah, I mean, hydrogen a... is like I, I have I've heard a, a fair number of engineers give what I think are at least remotely logical reasons as to why hydrogen could exist. Um, it won't exist as a combustion engine, though. Like, even though it works, right? Uh, you can use it in a far more efficient manner in a fuel cell, and so it's like at that point it's just an electric car yeah exactly so uh, a battery to me makes way more sense than than a hydrogen tank and yeah being able to just charge at home be full every day yeah you don't have to worry about hydrogen um yeah do you want me to make you a no more ice sticker for the tesla no more ice i was no i i is that a uh ice internal combustion yeah i'm trying to I'm trying to think. I don't only allow seven characters on a license plate, but it's like a bumper sticker. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, there's a there's just like this whole. I can't. Somebody sent me a screenshot of it. But it was like this Facebook group of people who just like talk about how great their Teslas are and how mm-hmm. awesome it is that they're saving the world and how terrible ice vehicles are. Yeah, it I is would a, never buy an ice vehicle weird, again. Weird, weird. Like there's like normal people who buy Teslas because they think they're awesome. I like hope I can put myself into that category. <laughs> Uh, and then there's like there's this like offset in in both directions of a group that's like this is the worst company ever and it's like why it's really cool it's like an American company that started from like nothing and actually works and actually sells cars like do you know how hard that is to yeah. do to create a car company and be successful at it like 
they've only made profit for two quarters, but still, like, they are selling actual cars versus, like, the other options out there. I mean, so many companies have gone under trying to make cars in America. It doesn't work. So it's very cool that they've done it and done it with electric cars, which aren't popular. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's really cool. Uh, the other, sorry, where we go? Oh, saying against uh, internal combustion engines. And, and then there's a group that's like, Teslas are God. And it's like, well, hold on a second. Like, <laughs> Like autopilot, for example, autopilot's a five thousand dollar feature. Yeah. And if you buy it after the fact, it's seven thousand dollars. And it's like someone on Twitter was like, posted my video and was like, if someone calls autopilot fancy cruise control, just sigh and walk away from that because uh-huh. that's what I said in my video. And it's like, okay, dude, like tell me what it does that the Nissan Leaf doesn't do. And yes, it has way more sensors. And yes, it's more advanced than what the Leaf uh, has equipment wise, hardware wise. But as far as how they function, yeah. the only real difference is that you can change lanes with a Tesla and you can't change lanes right. with a Leaf. You have to like use your hands and like turn the wheel. Yeah. And that's oh, awkward. Man, that's, I don't know if you've ever tried it. That's crazy. Yeah. And so I, I was like, dude, like, what's the difference between this and a Leaf? And he's just like, Leaf, I roll. And it was like, all right, like, I don't, like, I'm telling you, they do the exact same thing. The Leaf will keep you in your lane, and it will adjust its speed depending on how far ahead the car in front of you is. It will do both of those things, which is exactly what the Tesla does now. Will the Tesla be capable of more in the future? Yes. Yeah. Could the Leaf? Yes. Yeah. So, like, regulations right now limit us. So... I think the future is definitely in holding the steering wheel and <laughs> guiding the thing where you want it to go. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, I just, I, it would be really fun for me to do a video like the Honda video I did, but as a Tesla owner, and just like get a shirt, oh, and a, a jacket, yes. and a hat. I yes. said a shirt when I pointed at my hat. That's you should. I'll lend you my Tesla. Dude, I'm, I'm happy to. I'm yeah. really down. Get some, get some Tesla swag, and be like, every <laughs> Tesla owner, be like, oh, and then, and then make that reference. Just be like, if you call this fancy cruise control, <sighs> <laughs> what are you even doing? <laughs> Okay, um, what engineering does he see in brands or models that upsets him? Like, does he ever see or hear of a design of some kind of system and think that's utter shite? Oh, absolutely. And here's the thing. I'm not going to rag on engineers because I think engineers are awesome. And truthfully, all the engineers that are working, like, within the automotive field uh, are incredible. Like, the, the what, what people are able to come up with and put out is inspirational and I'm a useless engineer hence I just babble on YouTube. <laughs> so what I what I what I get uninspired by is not a result of what engineers did, it's a result of what marketing forced engineers to do, mm. which is a result of what customers wanted. So you can't really fault marketing all that much because they're trying to do what they think will sell. So a great example is stepped gear ratios in a CVT. Yeah. And it's like this is so backwards. If you ask any engineer, any company that sells the CVT, they'll be like, yeah, we could get better fuel economy if we didn't do this. Yeah. And then they'll be like, why do you do it? And it's like, because that's what the customer wants. Yeah. And that's the answer. And so, like, a lot of people, like, on my channel, I'll say this, like, uh, like it's really silly that we're, like, from, from an engineering strategy to do that to a CBT and then people will say oh this is dumb and you'll just see everyone like spread this hatred towards this strategy towards CBTs and it's like okay but you guys aren't the ones buying them right and like the that voice is actually accurate of the people that are buying it like that's what they want and it's like okay give it to them yeah but I think it's dumb yeah no it's it is ridiculous and it is like you said most of the time not by choice of them to make something that's very obviously yeah you look at it and you're like what what is that for? Yeah, I'm sure there are flaws. I'm sure there's yeah. plenty of cars with flaws. Um, I, I don't have a great example of it. <laughs> I just, I get, I get upset by the, like the customer driven ones and I'm like, no, just like be okay with better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And this next one I was kind of curious about as well, but have you ever had just like a really bizarre encounter with a subscriber? Oh man. Uh... Yes. So I would say 90% of the time... Okay, first of all, the one that, that posted a photo of me uh, saw me in person, took a picture of me, posted it on that Boise Oh, Spotters, on the Spotted Group, and yeah. And didn't say hello. Yeah, that was... That's creepy. That was weird. I, I don't care if you come up and say hello. Like, that's whatever. Like, cool. I'm excited. Glad you like the channel. That's awesome. 
don't take a photo of me and then be like some creep and post it on the internet and be like, I saw it. Hey, Engineering who, who explained. Yeah. No, I, I saw that and I was just like, that's really bizarre, dude. Um, I had, there was, a, there was a time I was like waiting in line at a restaurant or something and I would say 90% of interactions are great uh, and then 10% are extraordinarily awkward. Partly because I'm also awkward, and so it's like, if you're awkward, like, together, we're going to ruin this. Yeah. <laughs> so this dude's like, oh, like, I like your channel. And I was like, oh, I really appreciate that. Thanks for watching. And then he just stared at me. <laughs> and so we're standing in line at this, like, restaurant, like, like fast food restaurant to order, and he's just staring at me. And he's not saying a word, uh-uh. and he's just staring at me. And it's, like, prolonged, like just him staring at me and I'm like okay this is like incredibly awkward so then I'll like try to come up with a question just to like move it along but like I'd ask a question he'd give like a one or two word response and then just keep staring and I'm like oh dude like <laughs> social skills <Yes>. here <laughs> yeah yeah I, I had another one go ahead no no good okay I had another one I was at the zoo and a dude literally like jumped off a bench and like jumped up in the air and I was like that's weird and he like started telling his girlfriend he's like oh my god this guy's on YouTube and he makes car videos <laughs> and his girlfriend clearly didn't care at all and I was like I was like honestly like I'm with you lady like it's not it's that cool like don't easy. worry about it <laughs> yeah I every time I've met somebody that watches my videos I feel like my channel is still too small for me to ever be comfortable with it. Yeah. So I am the one that makes it weird. <laughs> yeah. So everyone's just like, well, what's, what's going on with this? What are you doing with this? I'm just like, I don't know, dude. Like, we we'll make videos about it. Watch the videos. I don't know what to tell you. I had a guy at Disneyland. I was yeah. walking. I went and got a bottle of water. So my parents were on a ride. And I didn't want to go on with them. So I was just walking back from getting a bottle of water. And I hear my name. And I, like, turn around. I don't see any of my family members. And there's this dude, he was like seven foot one too, which was the craziest thing because I'm not used to looking up at people. Yeah. And he wanted to take a picture with me and he was just like sitting there just chatting with me. And I, I was just so weird about the whole thing. Oh, and then one time I had, uh, I think my channel at the time had like 3,000 subscribers. It was when I was doing that Honda with the Pokemon cards and stuff on it mm-hmm. a long time ago. And on Halloween, someone rang the doorbell. And my mom answered it because it's Halloween, prepared to give him candy. And they asked for me. Well, they asked for Brandon. But uh, <laughs> they they had ridden their bikes all over our neighborhood and looked for my Honda because they had seen me driving down the street Wild. near where my parents live. Yeah. And spent their whole Halloween trying to find me. That's creepy. So they could talk to me. So I'm just standing in my parents' driveway talking to like, these 12-year-old kids, super weird out. And he's like, one of them's like, oh, my mom's selling her Honda Civic. Do you want to buy that? I'm like... <laughs> nah, <laughs> I'm all right. No, <laughs> it, is, it is the weirdest thing. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever get used to people recognizing me. Yeah, I yeah, I don't. It's weird. The guy, I got some Mexican food last night, and the guy, like, bringing the chips over was like, ah, oh, dude, I love your channel. It's like, this is bizarre. Like, chips? <laughs> that actually, <laughs> I had the opposite thing happen one time when I was driving for DoorDash. I brought some of their food, and he's like, did you make a video about Hondas? And I was like, <laughs> no. That that was the most I'd ever been recognized That's, for. Well, things. part of me wanted to ask because do do people ask you, are you that guy? And then what is what follows that? What I'm curious about. It's it's just usually are are you the Honda guy? Yeah. Okay. And I'm like, yeah. That got huge. That was yeah, like like 32 million views yeah, or something insane. like that. Yeah. So they're like. Bro, that video is so funny, and then that's pretty much the end of it every single time. You're like, I've done more. But yeah, yeah. No, listen, there's other things. It's not just me being a jackass all the time. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and then I, I know I did the one, the FSST, and then I drove the Skyline. But I just people wanted me to keep doing that format. Yes. And that video actually came up because I didn't have a video to shoot. And I was just like, all these like huge Honda fanboys are yeah. always in my comments because yeah. this was when you know. When you do Honda stuff on YouTube, it generally gets attention. So I was just like, I'm going to just kind of like mock these people yeah. and they're not going to realize it. And then everyone else who is in the car world that knows how yeah. Honda people can be are going <laughs> to enjoy it. And then I had put a couple of videos, submitted them to Car Throttle. So I was like, oh, maybe this one will crack a million. And then I actually, we went downtown once because they do the cruise downtown. 
and I was in the Accord that I shot the video with, and it was uh-huh. before I had taken the stupid lights off of it and the hood, and it was all riced out still. Yeah. So they're like, you want to go downtown tonight? I was like, not especially, to be honest with you. And they're like, oh, why not? It'll be fine. I was like, this is a, this is a big group of people that just sit there and quote that video all night. <laughs> and the first thing that happens, I park the car and get out. And his guy drives by in an EG hatch Civic. <laughs> and he's like, squad, bro, love your Honda. I was like, I'm leaving. <laughs> I can't handle this right now. <laughs> They're All right, actually one... really fast. Yeah, they are insanely fast. <laughs> one question is, when's the last time you had a girlfriend? So I guess now's a good time to bring up that you recently got married. Yeah, I'm married. Congratulations. So, uh, we've been together for nine years. <laughs> um, someone... <laughs> really? Exciting. Nine years? I didn't even. Know I do that. get hit on by a lot of guys, though, so I guess really? uh, taken is the statement I'm now putting out. Yeah, yeah, married and happy about it. Yeah, yeah, super happy. She's awesome. Make him ask people to subscribe to PewDiePie. Oh, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a trend. What's yeah. the T squared or whatever? T series. Yeah. T series. T yeah, squared. The gap's closing. Just subscribe to PewDiePie. Yeah, it's only like twenty thousand. <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> wow. This, I I can't believe. What is it like? 80 million subscribers yeah, 80 or something million, that they're at. Yeah, that's insane. That is nuts. Yep. All right. Has he learned how to do a burnout yet? <laughs> <laughs> nope, still clueless. Yeah, can't do it. Oh, yeah, this guy was uh, asking uh, if you're really happy with the Model 3 purchase and getting the performance oh, package. I am. I the... am genuinely happy. Yeah, I, I had regret with the mid-range, and I was like, man, I messed up. And the more I thought about it, I was like, well, either do something about it or get over it. And I wasn't getting over it, so I did something about it. And it's, nice. Yeah, it was a process. The if, if I had never bought the performance, I would have said Tesla's buying experience is the smoothest, best thing you could ever do. Yeah. And then having bought the performance, it was the least smooth, most ridiculous, insane buying experience ever. I still have control of the old car on my phone which i <laughs> sold december 23rd it left it left me forever it's gone i have not had and it is february and i still have access to it i got charged for it charging oh, it was nice. put on a supercharger i got charged for it uh they lost my trade-in papers twice oh so they sent me a third set of trade-in papers and said include your title and i was like yo it was with the first set of papers. So, yeah, it's a mess. The first one, though, was awesome. Ordered online. They're at my house two days later. The end. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, what? That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty content that you bought it because he let me drive it before we shot this <laughs> podcast. And he told me to stop and then just floor it. And like I was telling everybody so far, there was no <laughs> amount of preparation I could have built up for what I got. Yeah. And it's insane to know that that's not even the fastest option in terms of the Tesla range. No. But 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds is more than enough to just blow me away. Yeah, it's wild. It is wild. And this person wants to know when you're doing another Chris Fix collab and when he's going to do a face reveal. So I was like, well, it doesn't Chris take Fix? much to find his face <laughs> at this point. Well, but... it doesn't. Uh, Chris Fix has said he'll do a face reveal at 10 million. Uh, so just get on subscribing like you yeah. have with Pie. Yeah. <laughs> and get you'll have eight face reveals. Going. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Eight face reveals at this point. So. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got here. We are creeping or you can up use on Google. <laughs> yeah, it take like 15 seconds. I do like that. I mean, you probably get it too. Like, there's a lot of questions that Google can't answer. Like, I, I try to make my videos very approachable and, like, come in it from any level and, like, try to learn because that's, like, right. my goal is, like, learn how cars work because that's what I wanted to do. I was clueless, so I tried to figure them out and I made a video about what I was figuring out. Uh, but a lot of questions are just like, what's the ground clearance on a Subaru Crosstrek? And you're like, like, literally, Seriously? Google has, like, a built in feature where you just type that and it's, it's like, pops up right there. Yeah, the there. top result, yeah. yeah. 8.7. Hmm, that's not bad, actually. It's <laughs> pretty good. See, but they asked you, and you do know it right off the top of your head. Yeah, that was a bad example because it's a car I own. It's more like, what's a Lexus ES 300's ground clearance? And you're like, huh? Like, I don't know, dude. I had something you just said triggered a question that I forgot it immediately. Oh. But uh, uh, Well, do people ask you questions that are Googleable, or is this a Googleable thing? Or No, that's... Well, all right, we'll move on. <laughs> This guy wants that to know. Never happens. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay, I remember now. This was a big one because you said that you used to just like 
research things and then immediately make a video about it. And I saw you did a video on like scuba diving mm-hmm. here a long time ago. Mm-hmm. So in in the grand scheme of that, did you ever expect for your channel to get as big as it is? And what was kind of the turning point for you? Like, okay, this is like this is a career option. Yeah, that's a good question. So. Uh, no, I didn't expect it uh, at all. I, I did it as, so I had a, I, I had an internship. I worked for the government for the state. Uh, so taxpayers uh, paid me to do nothing, which is awesome. Sick. Thank you all. Uh, <laughs> I was making $10 an hour, which as an engineer is not like super amazing, but it was fine. Like for college, it was good, good enough. Yeah. Um, and I had nothing to do, so after, like, playing games for, like, a month, I was like, alright, like, this is my only internship before I go out into the real world, I need to, like, have something to be like, I did this in my time, aside from, like, got grades. So I started a YouTube channel, I called it Engineering Explained, it was kind of, uh, based on, I, I was actually translating a Marshall Brain book to Spanish for, like, part of a Spanish course, like, we had to do some, like, translate specific words, so Marshall Brain fellow NC State grad, wrote the book How Stuff Works. He came up with How Stuff Works, that whole website. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I really like his stuff. I thought it was really cool. And I was like, hey, it'd be neat if there was a video format of this. Right. So I'm going to do that. It's going to be a How Stuff Works uh, uh, engineering-related material, How Stuff Works on YouTube. And that'll be what I do. And that'll be something that I can put on a resume and hopefully, as a result, get a job. So I did that over that summer, put out a bunch of videos, and that's where kind of the weird stuff came in because it was like, literally like, I had, I don't know, six subscribers, and so I was like, what do you guys want to watch? <laughs> and they are like, I, I don't know, it was probably like their homework project, like, I, yeah. need, I need to explain how this thing works. And they're like, how does the scuba regulator work? And I was like, I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. So I did two videos on scuba regulators, they only have like four or 5,000 views, uh, but did two videos on scuba regulators and then it was like okay this stuff is kind of boring cars are more exciting so i eventually started to like steer towards cars um i had about 2000 subscribers when i was applying to jobs and so it was ne- well okay i applied to like 40 to 50 jobs i got two interviews both were kind of just out of luck not out of like we like this guy yeah and once you bring up like especially then like now it's probably common more common for people to have a youtube channel but this was 2011 where like it was growing, it was popular, you could make money on it, but it was still like very new ish. Right. Um, and so people were like, Oh, like you actually have like a decent following on there. Uh, like let's talk about that. And so it would derail conversations in interviews to just talk about YouTube, which was like, okay, this is cool. So interview, like when, when a company is interviewing, they love to see passion. And I think that was like obvious that I was super excited about this YouTube channel. So they're like, okay, we'll hire you. So I got hired. I mean, my odds were not great. I applied to 40 to 50 companies. I got two offers. Right. Um, And that was from two interviews. So only two interviews out of that. Crappy odds. But it worked. Like, the plan was make a YouTube channel, get a job because of it. Kind of worked. So then I worked for two years uh, as a forklift engineer. And I continued making the YouTube videos because there was, like, a part of my head that was, like, you know, like, if my rate of growth remains constant right this could eventually be like financially like sustainable right so in 2000 let's see 2014 15, 14 i don't remember 14 i think yes 2014 um i was i'd worked for two years and i was like probably making 20,000 off YouTube in a year. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm going to quit and see what happens. Yeah. So that's what I did. And yeah, that was four, five, four and a half years ago. And I'm still uh, living off YouTube, which is insane that that's possible. Right. Uh, But the turning point was like, well, I'm at like a, not, great income, but like, yeah, I could live off of this and see what happens. So like, obviously less than an engineer salary, but right. let's, let's just see what happens. So yeah, it, it was cool. It's cool that it's worked out. It seems like that rings true to a lot of YouTubers who've been super successful. There's a point where they like, like James, the strad man, he mm-hmm. got laid off and he's like, well, let's just see if YouTube can work. It seems like everybody similarly has a point where they're like, I know I'm taking a big loss here if I just drop everything else and work on this, but yeah. I guess it kind of is just proof that if you really put effort into something you enjoy doing, eventually things 
can fall into place. I won't say can, will. Yeah. yeah. I like to be I like to be hyper hyper realistic. Yeah. And perhaps that's a fault to like be less inspirational. Uh, but what I like to say when people are like like oh, like follow your passion like blah blah blah. It's like yeah like here's what you should do. Like ideal world is you work the minimal amount possible in order to be able to do all the things that you want to do with your time. Right. So if your job sucks, fine. Just don't make it that you're working all day long every yeah. day. And if you're not, if you've still got time to do what you want to do outside of work, like both things kind of exist. Like you have to work because you have to live. Yeah. Uh, and in order to do the things you want to do, you have to have income. But don't like, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily has to be the rule that like, if you find something that's fine, you're not like totally stoked on, but you're fine with it. And it allows you to do what you want to do in your free time. Like that's ideal. Right. That's living to me. And so that's what that engineering job was. It was like, well, this pays for me to be able to live and I can do this YouTube stuff on the side because I think it's really fun. Right. And it just so happened to turn into a job. Yeah. Great. Uh, but I wouldn't just be like, you know what? Quit your job yeah. right now and yeah. try a hey, YouTube listen. channel. I will say, though, like to be mildly inspirational uh, is that when I quit, like there was a noticeable like notch in my curve of growth. So it was like, here we go, you know, flat curve, flat curve. And then there's a kink uh, the month that I quit. Right. And, and it like doubled the rate of growth. Yeah. So that's cool to see because you put all your all your effort into something, you will get a better return. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of like, uh, you know, I've seen the adverse thing since getting a real job and watching, you know, view counts drop and everything because I have less time for it. But when I started my YouTube channel, I was detailing cars in my parents' garage. I didn't have a real job. Mm -hmm. And if you go watch like some of my older videos, it's like basic maintenance on the rabbit and then like cleaning cars and tinting taillights and yep. stuff like that. And that's when I, I bought the Honda. Uh, my brother and I were just like, yeah, let's just screw around with this thing. I paid 200 bucks for it. And that's kind of where the ball got rolling. And, like, I'm not at all upset that I had to get a real job. I got to just play with cars yeah. and make videos about it for two yeah. years. So, Well, that's how I approach it, too. Like, people are like, what's your five-year plan? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm going to ride this out yeah, for we'll sure. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> like, YouTube could disappear tomorrow. That sucks. I'll figure out life at that moment. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't anticipate it lasting forever. All right. I think uh, this is probably a great one to end on. This All guy right. wants to know how it feels to be the dollar store ripoff of Brian Cox. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's interesting is last night I was actually watching his podcast with Joe Rogan. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is fantastic. He has such uh, an amazing way with, like, wording everything. Like, it is it is beautiful to watch, actually, how he speaks. And I was I was just admiring it. And I was like, I was like man, people tell me a lot that I look like him. And I was like, Psh, that is nonsense. This dude, like... <laughs> The way he talks is just so, so good. Like, it is it is very impressive. He's a brilliant dude. And he actually, like, researches. Like, people are like, like, there there is no comparison. Like, literally all I do is make YouTube videos. Like, he goes on a podcast to talk about his research. He doesn't right. go on a podcast to be like, I make YouTube videos yeah. <laughs> about space. It's like, no. Like, he actually, like, puts time into, like, researching stuff. Right. And, and progressing yeah. science yeah yeah he's he's actually a cool guy i was i'm like halfway through that podcast right now that's pretty much all i do oh. at work is just drive around listen to the podcast yeah. and... it is awesome uh he actually did reply to a tweet of mine once oh really i think someone said like jason did you know that you look like brian cox or something or or Someone actually might have told him that he looked like me. And I was like, ooh, that's bold. Uh, <laughs> and then I think he replied back something like, it's the other way around or something. I don't remember what it was. But he did reply to something. Uh, and it was, a, it was a moment where I was like, ooh, cool. He was like, nice. <laughs> the made it moment. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're about to run out of camera space. So I need a way bigger SD card. I've just been too lazy to go get one. But uh, this has been the podcast. Thanks for joining us, Jason. It really was a lot appreciate of fun. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was super fun. Thanks for having me. It didn't seem like it drug out forever, and the hour mm -hmm. came by pretty quick. So uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, pay attention for future podcasts. If you want to see them here, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you guys in the next video. Subscribe to PewDiePie. Yeah. <laughs>